Listen, there is such a strong play of pride and spiritual blindness throughout the world today. And I notice when, you know, when you minister to people or when you constantly try to counsel people or you want to be that person that gives somebody advice, people always get so offended when you point certain things out about them. But it's like that person cannot accept or realize that you're just trying to help them because that spirit of pride and offense, that spirit of Jezebel, the mommy, the daddy issues rise up to the surface and it causes them to reject everything that you're trying to tell them. Or they think that you're trying to purposely offend them or come for their character when really deep down inside you are just trying to help that person and open their eyes to something right? that will help them grow. Now, the Bible says the enemy has blinded the eyes of unbelievers. Now, the reason why there's such a spiritual blindness, well, there's many reasons, but one of the reasons is because of pride attached to trauma. Because when a person is prideful, they don't want to do what? They don't want to take accountability, right? They don't want to be accountable for their actions. Even in relationships, a person that has a strong spirit of pride, they will destroy the relationship as long as it means I'm not wrong about anything. It doesn't matter how much they love the person. They'll even love you, right? They'll love the person they're friends with. They'll love the person they're in a relationship with. But that spirit of pride is so strong, it won't allow them to admit that they're wrong. And you can always tell how much brokenness and how much trauma a person is dealing with by how strong the spirit of pride is. Now, why is this? I'm going to explain it the best way I can. Because... When somebody is dealing with a certain level of brokenness, when somebody has been severely traumatized again and again and again, it causes them to put up a stronger and a stronger wall. Right? It causes them to put up a tougher and a tougher exterior. It causes them to be harder. It causes their heart to be harder because they say, I'm never going to let this happen again. I'm never going to open up. I'm never going to become vulnerable to somebody ever again. So they don't want to hold themselves accountable because... They don't want to be looked at as weak or vulnerable if they have to say sorry. So, yes, the more traumatized a person is and the more unresolved and unaddressed trauma that they have, over time it only gets stronger. That wall that they put up only gets stronger. So, therefore, it also makes the spirit of uh, pride stronger as well. Are y'all with me? So, watch this. Now, this is why... People in this generation a lot of times do not grow because the level of trauma and brokenness in their souls understand that every area of trauma, it has to attach itself to something. So I'm going to explain to y'all why when people are traumatized, a lot of times unresolved trauma, it leads people to operating in witchcraft. It leads people to practicing witchcraft because not only is that person in the flesh now, but if you're already operating in fleshly witchcraft, you are a great candidate candidate to begin um, graduating into spiritual witchcraft. Because again, every area of trauma in your soul is like an empty void. And that empty void, that area of brokenness in your soul, it has to attach itself to something and it has to be fed by something. When you don't resolve your trauma, when you're not intentional from healing that trauma, that trauma is automatically going to try to attach itself to something. So every area of sin in your life, whether it's addictions, whether it's fornication, whether you end up becoming promiscuous, all right, you engage in, in, in drunkenness, orgies, debauchery, whatever the case may be, or if you end up practicing witchcraft. You want to manipulate and control people because you're insecure. So you feel like you have to have that attention. You have to have people chasing you. You have to feel like, oh, I'm controlling everybody in my relationships. So I feel powerful because without being able to control people, I feel powerless. This comes from trauma, insecurity, rejection, abandonment, brokenness. So. Unfortunately, in the generation that we live in, instead of people wanting to seek Jesus Christ and receive healing the right way, they want to heal through elevation, right? They want to heal through elevation. So basically, your trauma a lot of times transforms your identity into becoming somebody that worships the spirit that attached to you through your trauma. Just like people who get 
violated when they're children. They end up being very promiscuous. They end up being, I gotta, I gotta be careful using my words so TikTok doesn't violate me. They ha they're very hyperactive when it comes to fornication. Right now, a woman who got touched when she was a child, now what happens is she wants to grow up to be a dancer, an exotic dancer. She wants to be a model that dresses half naked. So she's feeding and she's worshiping the spirit of her victimization but she's operating in witchcraft. People end up doing rituals and casting spells on people because they wanna control narratives. They wanna control people and situations, but it's really their trauma that's being fed. It's their brokenness that's being fed by them committing sin and by them doing witchcraft, all right? And now people get so used to this. They get so used to operating in witchcraft. They get so used to having addictions uh, drug addictions, uh, uh, um, sex addictions, and which leads to even deeper bondage, and now they don't want to get out of it. They don't want to get out of it because it's what they're used to. It's what they're comfortable with. Because if they had to get rid of all of those things, guess what? If they had to get rid of all of those things, if they had to stop controlling people, stop getting in and out of different relationships, once you remove all of that, it's going to cause that person to be alone. And once that person is alone, now they have to face themselves. And that's one of these people's biggest fears. When people are traumatized like this and they're operating in all these different types of uh, addictions and habits and um. And, and different, you know, they're fornicating with different people. They're afraid that if they stop that, they're going to have to face themselves. And people, a lot of times, are afraid of what they're going to see in the mirror. They're going to have to walk into the unknown. They're going to have to allow God to uproot, to dig up all those root core systems of trauma. It's going to cause them to have to give up certain things. It's going to cause them to have to give up their pride, their arrogance, their ego. And they're going to have to humble themselves and allow God to bring them back down and then transform and heal the right way. And that's what this generation doesn't want to do. And so you have a lot of people even that come to the church and you try to explain this kind of stuff to them. You try to point out certain things. And it's not that you're trying to judge them or be overly critical of them. But it's like, hey, all I'm trying to do is bring you into healing and wholeness the right way. Instead of you continuing to live through the lens of your trauma by feeding your broken places by feeding and filling those empty voids with all sorts of perversions and all sorts of sin because your soul is being compromised and all these things end up leading you to hell. Amen. So listen, pray for these people. When you see somebody like this dealing with a strong spirit of pride, living through their trauma, all right, not wanting to open up, not wanting to become vulnerable, not wanting to take accountability, Pray for these people that they have a supernatural encounter with God because sometimes it's not a matter of telling them. It's a matter of you praying and interceding for them and hopefully over time them having a some type of supernatural experience that causes them to not be able to deny God any longer. Because if not, if people continue this way, eventually that witchcraft and that trauma that's living through that person is going to cause that person to give themselves over to the delusion, which means give themselves over to what's called a reprobate mind. And once they've been given over to a reprobate mind, the Bible says, I'm going to send on them an even stronger delusion so that they will believe the lie and therefore be condemned. But this is not God's intention for your soul. Amen. His intention is for you to receive love, to receive healing, restoration, salvation, and to walk in freedom, even in this natural realm. I love y'all and God bless.